So let's take a look at a, another SteelSeries product. Of course, there have been some great deals here uh, pre-Black Friday. Uh, this is the kind of headset I have been looking at for quite some time, ever since it came out. Really been tempted to get one, but of course it is a relatively expensive headset, but now you can get it at its all-time lowest price, at least of, as of this date, of course. It will probably get even lower the longer it will stay on the market. I do have the original SteelSeries Axis Pro wireless, but I find myself not using them really anymore because of a few issues. They're a little bit loose on my head and I'm not really totally in love with this ski band. Very comfortable, but I have a, a tendency to slide up or down my head. And when I'm actually just wearing them on top of my head, not on my ears, but not listening to something, I wear them on top of my head. They kind of have a tendency to slide back and forward. And also the volume rocker is located on the back here, which is a little bit annoying. It constantly hits my gaming chair and yeah, volume up or down. And I often also accidentally hit this one, so you get a little bit of an audio feedback when you're actually disabling the microphone. Plus the fact that it's only really micro USB and have this weird plug if you want to plug them in with a cable. So overall, I really like them, but yeah, like I said, I don't really use them. I use my Logitech G Pro X Wireless. Is that what they're called? Because they are much easier to just deal with, take on and off. And you only really need to plug in this little dongle to your computer and you can control the audio of the computer itself using this volume rocker here, even though it doesn't have that convenient battery swap system that, of course, this Arctis Pro here do have, where you can remove one of the sides and just swap out the battery. Fantastic, fantastic solution. I really like that. And this Nova Pro Wireless, Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, actually take that a step further. So you can actually swap out the battery now, but without having to power them on again. It's a little bit annoying, always have to power it on after you actually swapped out the battery. Not a big deal, but considering these ones here, you can just swap out the battery and just continue gaming. That's definitely a step list you have to go through to actually get full battery onto these headphones here. And I also really like this new design where you can actually adjust the length of the ear cups here so it will fit your head a little bit better. And the ski band is a little better integrated into the actual headband here as well. And also I really dig this new design. Noise cancelling, not really too much into that. I would probably end up using it, but it's definitely not a feature that I am specifically wanting. But of course, high fidelity gaming audio with active noise cancellation, and you can use wireless and Bluetooth. So 2.4 gigahertz using this little adapter and also Bluetooth. Let's have a look around the box. A little more specifications here on the right side. Of course, you do get a USB Type-C cable. You do get an audio cable as well, which is nice. So you can plug it in to an audio device, for instance, if you want to monitor some audio. Great deal. It's a little bit annoying. You have to use that proprietary cable on the other one. The other plug here is actually for sharing audio, which is a little bit weird. I never really had any use for that. Of course, you can still get that little wireless base station and you get two lithium batteries and another feature I really, really dig on this one here is that you can connect two computers at the same time. So if you, like me, have two computers hooked up to the same monitor, it is very convenient to just be able to switch between the two easily. And you still, of course, have Bluetooth. And we do get up to 44 hours of battery life. I believe that's with the 2.4 gigahertz. You get 36 hours in Bluetooth mode, I believe. Or oh, no, excuse me, 2.4 plus Bluetooth. And that is if you count both batteries. So it's 18 to 22 hours per battery. So 36 hours is if you count the two batteries, so swap them out in between. And the same for the 44 hours, 50 minutes of charge, three hours of use, low latency 2.4, Bluetooth version 5. Very nice, newer standard. And you can actually stream from 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth at the same time, up to 12 meters of range, which is excellent. Designed in Denmark, where I live, so yeah, definitely want to support the local brands. Still serious, active with Noah branding up here, most winning brand in eSport. <laughs> they really like to put that on their boxes. I think I've seen that at all the boxes. I do also have the Arctic 7. I never ever use those at all. But the Arctic Pro, I definitely have used those quite a bit. The wireless ones. Arctis Nova Pro for glory. <laughs> Backside is where we find some more information. Everything that's included, of course. You get those two batteries with uh, quick swap batteries, active noise cancellation, multi-system connect, and you get that custom designed high res speaker inside the headphones themselves. So let's just get into this box. We have those little pull tabs on the top and on the bottom as well. So let's just pull those, see what we actually get included. So this will just be an unboxing and first impressions of these headphones. And we should be able to just 
slide the top lid off here and a little bit of protection inside the lid. So let's have a look at what we actually get inside the box. First edition. Okay. What do they mean by first edition? You get this little card here. First edition for glory. Is this because this is the first edition of these headphones here? This is just a cardboard card. I'm not really sure what you should use that for anyways, but you also get some instructions included. Of course, you can see what you get included in the packaging, how to use the headphones, headset, what all the buttons do, accessories, how to use the little receiver. And you can, of course, hook it up to two computers. I'm kind of curious to see if it would actually automatically switch between the two devices. So if you're actively using computer number one, it will automatically go to one. When you shut that one down and open your computer number two, maybe it would automatically switch to that one. I kind of hope it will do so. Of course, I will test that out at some point. And of course, how to swap out the batteries and you can also charge it using USB Type-C, which is excellent. And how to power it up. And you can also have some control of your audio. And of course, answer and end call as well, which is kind of nice using that one button there. And it'll take you through some of the features of the little dock or receiver you can include it. And one of the nice features here is that you can actually send audio to your speakers as well. So you do not constantly have to switch between audio device. Inside Windows, you know, you go down to the right corner of the screen, bottom corner of the screen, and you have to switch audio using your mouse in Windows manually. But this one, you can just keep it at these headphones and it will send the audio to your speakers. I really, really like that feature. So when you're using your headphones, the audio will go to those, and if you just disconnect the headphones, the audio will go to your speakers. And stream and anti-noise cancellation, it does also have some transparency mode. Double press the headset power button, so you can go into transparency mode, which is actually kind of nice, so you can hear the surrounding. I often get kind of a shock when my girlfriend is standing next to me when I'm gaming, because I'm so caught up in the game. Retractable microphone, very, very nice feature. I like that a lot, because I never can remember where I put that microphone from my like G Pro Wireless, Pro X Wireless, whatever they're called. You know, they have the little plug-in microphone. Uh, it's somewhere, I'm not really sure where it is right now, but this is always connected to your headphone, so you can just roll it in and roll it out whenever you need it. If you of course need it, and you can get a perfect fit. And speaker plates, you can also switch uh, switch those out. You kind of into that sort of thing and in many different languages as well. So pretty decent instructions or product information guide as they call them here. So definitely is enough to get you up and running and start using your headset. Let's just take the headset out and let's have a closer look at what else we get in the box. And still see series of course is all in for their glory there. Open this for glory. Branding, let's remove that. And also the little receiver here which is very light and plasticky, but it will be sufficient. And I believe that's everything we get in the box. Let's just be completely sure. Yeah, a little bit of anti-moisture below there as well. So let's just remove the box. Let's get a little bit closer here and see what we actually get in the For Glory box here. And microphone positioning. I guess we kind of have to position it pretty close to the mouth. Let's just remove everything. And we can always have a little bit of a closer look. Well, then you can see this is all we get inside that box. You get a pop shield or pop filter here for your microphone. I'm not going to open this one because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to keep this kit. So I'm going to return it. I would like to keep this sealed. But yeah, it's a nice inclusion. But of course, you cannot retract it inside the microphone or inside the headset set if uh, this is connected. You get the second battery as well. I suppose the first battery is inside the headphone. And let's just compare a little bit actually. Because this is definitely a lot smaller than the original a Artist Pro Wireless. So of course, comparing the two batteries here, <laughs> yeah, there is no comparison. Much smaller in all of the, the dimensions, maybe same thickness, but other than that, it is smaller in the length and in the width as well. So it is 700 milliamp hours, the new one, compared to a thousand of the old one. I suspect it must be more efficient with the new one since it needs a smaller battery. I cannot really remember the official like battery lifetimes of the Arctis Pro wireless, but yeah, it definitely is a smaller battery with the new set here. Other than that, we get some cables, of course. So we have a mini jack, so 3.5 millimeter mini jack. This is, what is it, TRRS. So I suppose this is for you know, stereo and also for the microphone and this angle plug in the other end. I guess this one goes into the headphones and this one, of course, into your audio device or your listening device. Very nice that you can also use them wired, which is something I kind of miss sometimes with the Logitech G Pro X wireless. Then, of course, we get a USB Type-C to USB Type-A cable. Actually, we get two of those rubberized cables, exactly the same. 
I guess one is for charging the headset and one is plugging in the receiver or the wireless adapter or wireless box rather. Or maybe you could plug both of them in if you want to, of course, connect up, up to two computers or a PlayStation or an Xbox, switch between them. This is also a very uh, convenient, of course, to have two cables included. So I really like that. That's a nice addition. And then we get the little box here. Let's just remove the plastic first and have a closer look. A little bit hard to get out this plastic, but yeah, we managed to do so. And actually, it's almost transparent. I don't know if you can see it on camera with all this light here. I'm not sure if it's actually just me imagining things or what, but it almost appears like we can see through this plastic. But yeah, it has a little bit different design. Let me just bring out the original box here. So it is actually a much smaller box and doesn't really have the same rectangular design, which I kind of like because it's much easier to stick it underneath a shelf or underneath a table or stick it onto something. I have these magnetic tapes hooked up to one of my shelves I have next to my computer. So I cannot really do the same with this one because of this shape. So if I connect something here, of course, the part here will be a little bit in the way. So I'll need to find another solution for that. So that's a little bit of a downgrade. I could, of course, stick something at the bottom of the device and just plug it in that way. So I hope kind of maybe we can switch out the display or switch it around. So I'll still be able to see the display in the right, the, the right orientation if I move it around like so. Definitely a lot smaller when it comes to its thickness or its depth. Battery compartment is on the same side here. So right side, both of them. A little spring mechanism there. Let's just try the one on the new ones and see how well that works. I guess you need to plug it in the other way here. No, was it the right way first? Yeah, need to use a little bit more force and of course it will just spring out a little bit like so, so you can grab it and swap it out. And yeah, pretty much the same mechanism. But on the back side of the box, this is where the biggest difference is. And yeah, that glossy plastic just doesn't age all that well, get scratches and so on when you try to plug in cables. But one of the things you don't have anymore is the power input. Never had the need to use that. But of course, if you have some USB plugs that doesn't deliver enough power, it was a great option to have. Still have line in and line out, but you lose the two optical in and out. Personally, I've never used those, so it's not really a big miss for me. I would rather have that secondary USB and both of them now is USB type C instead of having that mini USB 2.0. I believe it's still 2.0, but just with the USB type C plug size instead. Nothing really on the left side. And the front side here, of course, you have a much bigger button. Actually kind of nice. It doesn't really have the same clicky feel like the previous model had. I really kind of like that as well. But both of them click in. And on the old ones, you have a physical button here to go in through the menu system. On the new one, you have an optical touch button. And of course, glossy plastic here on the front. And that will, of course, scratch up very easily. So not really the best design choice, in my opinion. Would have been nice to see some real glass at this price point, especially if you have this on your desk with other devices and so on and use it frequently, it will scratch up pretty easily. So that's of course all the accessories. Let's bring in the main contender there and man, feels very good right out of the bat. <laughs> Actually, this one always felt heavy and a little bit some loose and a little bit flimsy. Not really bad at all. I've had a great time using it. And of course you get it in this nice bag so you can also keep it dust free when you're not using it. And of course, if you want to transport it or bring it with you, it's nicer to have this little bag inside of your backpack and it has a little closer there, a closing mechanism so you can also close it up so it won't fall out as easily. So yeah, pretty decent bag. And first of all, let's just bring in the old headphones there just for a little bit of comparison. Uh, of course, these are used and maybe not in the newest condition, but you definitely see the difference. I kind of like the design of the old one as well because it doesn't, doesn't scream gamery the same way as a lot of, you know, gamer headphones does, or at least did back in the days. But first thing I noticed, aluminum's plate here on the ear cups. Kind of like that feel. So of course you can remove those. I believe you can remove them in both sides. And it's strong magnet, much stronger than on the previous model, where you also could remove both of them. Of course there was no functionality on the right one here, but or is it the left one rather? Just this pattern there. And they swap out like so easily. Uh, let's see if they will actually fall into place a little bit harder actually to see which orientation you should put them in or put them back in here. Is that the right orientation? I don't think so. Nah. Maybe I should turn it around a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit of an oversight, I think. Maybe it should just have made a little dot here or something on the bottom side so you know which orientation. But I guess you will just learn how the steel series logo look, looks on there. It's much easier when you have the steel series name printed on the bottom side. This is the bottom side, and of course, 
they are not a complete circles, they are more of a overall here, so it makes it much easier. This is a circular design here. So definitely some kind of metal with a few magnets here on the back. And of course the steel series logo there. And I believe one of the arrows have to point up and the other one have to point in the other direction. So left or right, depending on what headphones. Let's see. No, actually the other way around. So this one has to point backwards like so. Yeah, okay, so the two magnets here on the side have to rest on the side of the headphones as well, not in the top and the bottom, of course, because the battery mechanism there. So there's at least one way you could tell better magnets on the side there and should just be matched on the side as well. Of course, let's have a look at the controls on the headphones themselves. Power button all the way up here on the, what is, is that the left ear cup? Yeah, on the left ear cup, power button all the way up here. Of course, on the old one, it was on the right side, on the bottom of the right ear cup. So that's definitely a different position. And yeah, the Bluetooth one is on the right ear cup. And that's the only button I can find on there. So that's kind of nice. So it's easy to feel between the two. This one was also pretty easy because the Bluetooth button was recessed. So it was pretty easy to feel the difference between the two. But now it seems like all the controls have been moved to the left side. So we still have that microphone mute button. So it's a physical button that will click in when it's activated and out here you can see it's red when it's deactivated. Same kind of button, just a little bit bigger on the old headphones. And you have the volume rocker, so still have some kind of step or some tactical feel when you actually move it. And also clicking feel. And I like that it is kind of protected a little bit by the ear cup design. So whenever you are leaning back on your chair, it won't accidentally turn up or down the volume. It has been such an annoyance for me. So that's kind of a great, great feature, as well as on the Logitech, kind of pretty much in the exact same place. So it will just constantly turn up or down the volume when you lean back, you kind of get used to not leaning back. But yeah, these headphones, I don't have to think too much about that. And then of course we have that mini jack if you want to use them wired, instead of that weird plug here that's proprietary to SteelSeries. The other plug here is for sharing headphones with others. And I do have a magnetic connector in there, but we do have micro USB, of course, here on the left ear cup, on the left one here. We also have USB Type-C connection, so you have to remove the side panel to be able to get to that. I don't really care too much. I don't think I will use it with these headphones, unless, of course, I take it with me for traveling. But for that, I have other headphones I would rather bring with me. And then, of course, we have that microphone. There's a little arrow paper inside. So you can see you can extend it and retract it pretty easily. And that's pretty much the same design as the previous Steel Series. And there's also a little LED on here. So whenever you mute the microphone, it would actually light red. So you can kind of see that it's also muted. And you can position it like in a lot of different ways. It will kind of remember its position there. So really nice feature. And I like the fact that it's not sticking out anymore like the old one. I never really used the microphones. I would like to have it so I could use it at some point, but I don't really use in-game chat at all. It's even harder to tell that this is a gaming headphone compared to the previous models because, yeah, they don't have that little microphone sticking out. And like I said, on the right ear cup, we only have the Bluetooth. And then, of course, the biggest change is that we now have pleather ear cups. I'm not a big fan of pleather ear cups, and that is my biggest gripe with these headphones. I hope that they sell some of these microfiber or fabric ear cups, but of course that's my favorite. I get kind of warm ears, and I really, really like the feature, uh, the fact that they are not using like pleather on these ones here. And from a Logitech ones, I've actually swapped them out with the other ones that's included here, which also just is some fabric, much more comfortable to me at least. So I suspect I will get pretty sweaty ears actually using these ones here, or maybe I just need to get used to it. There's actually also a little bit of a, is it a microphone or whatever it is in here, kind of sticking out a little bit. I believe it's something to do with the noise cancellation, but of course you kind of have to try it to know it. My other headphones I have like with this pleather-ish, Ear cups is my Bose 700, I believe it's called. Also noise cancelling headphones. You can see it's actually a little bit deeper than those. So these are kind of my go-to Bluetooth headphones that I take with me when I'm traveling and so on. And I find that I can use them all right, but yeah, definitely get a little bit warm on my ears when I have them on for longer periods of time. One downgrade is that we now have a plastic arm going to the ear cups here compared to like the Arctis Pro Wireless where it's metal, so not really a big deal. Of course, not that flexible when it's made of metal. Plastic will probably like flex a little bit better when you're actually wearing them and also maybe a little bit more durable, I would suspect. 
But one of the great features with these new headphones is the fact that you can actually adjust them up and or down like so. Not something you could with the old one. You have the ski band, but there's not really a lot of adjustment there you can actually do with, with this kind of band. You cannot extend the, the ear cups themselves. But that's a nice feature. And of course, that ski band design, you could potentially just remove it altogether, but now it's not getting that much in the way as they did before. With this design where it's both on the top and on the bottom of the band, very comfortable when you had them on, but it feels a little bit like loose on your head at times. If you make any quick movement back and forward, they can kind of slip back and forward pretty easily. Comfortable, but not as secure on my head at least. So I'm very curious to try this new design out. Still is a lot of flex there, so it will kind of sit on your head but without you actually feeling the, the band of this, the headphones on top of your head. So I like the feature and we do have, I believe, metal all the way around here. Top of the headphones, very nice. And some kind of soft rubber on the inside and plastic here on the inside as well. Passive noise cancellation is actually quite good. I just took them on, fitting quite nicely as well on my ears. So yeah, I'm very curious to try them out. We do have some microphones around the headphones here to, of course, make that active noise cancellation work. So it kind of listens for the audio around you and then it will kind of cancel it out by sending some sound waves to your ears to cancel out those kind of noise. So you can't really hear them all that loudly. I've heard that it's not really the best, but I suspect it would be good enough. And you have an inside here, right here and left over here, if you ever like in any doubt which one goes to what ear, but it's very small and faint. Kind of have to look for it a little bit. So one immediate annoyance with these headphones here is the fact that if you have a PC like me, I have a MSI X570 PC, so a Ryzen system. If you put the PC into sleep mode, I rarely turn my computer off, but in sleep mode, the USB port will always be on, or at least it will be transmitting power. And the display on the Artis Nova Pro Wireless will always be on if you have a PC like that. So that's kind of annoying, unlike on the Arctis Pro Wireless, the non-Nova variants, the previous models, you could actually go into the SteelSeries engine and just set the display to time out after a specific period of time. You cannot do that with the Nova. You can only set it to dim down after a specific period of time. So it won't completely turn off, but it will just go into a dimmer state like it is in right now. That's kind of unfortunate. I uh, really hope the still series will fix that because that's kind of close to being a deal breaker for me personally. The way I fixed this was just to connect the Arctis Nova Pro to my monitor. And whenever my monitor gets into standby, it will turn off its USB port because it has a built-in USB hub and hence it will turn off the display of the Arctis Nova little base station here or wireless transmitter. So that's very annoying. So if you have a PC like me that doesn't turn off the power of the USB ports when it's in standby, or maybe even if it's powered off, even if you have enabled ERP, then the display will always be on. I really hope the Steel Series will fix this issue because that's a big annoyance for me personally. You could of course also get a USB hub with a physical uh, on-off switch for the specific USB port, but that's also a can inconvenience to have to go in and turn on and off there for that every time you want to use the headphones. My other little computer down here, which is also connected to the Artis Nova Pro Wireless, it does turn off its USB port also when it is in sleep mode, not when it's in standby mode, but now it's completely sleeping or hibernating. So if you use two computers like me for the same Artis Nova Headset, it does switch automatically between USB devices if USB 1 is turned off. So again, that's also another inconvenience if it doesn't turn off because the computer doesn't turn off the USB port. It will not switch automatically to USB 2. You can see it's still in USB 1, even though I just switched on my secondary computer down here. But if the base station is off, it will automatically switch to USB 2 or USB 1, whatever device you are powering up first. So that's nice, but again, I really wish that Still Series have made the ability to just switch off that display in settings after a specific period of time, completely off, so it will still be on and charging the battery that's in the base station, but just the display will come off because not only is it an annoyance that it will emit light out into the room at night, but also the fact that this is an OLED screen, so it will just burn out with time, not as fast if you set it to dim after a specific period of time, but still that's just another power source and another annoyance in my opinion. So I have been gaming with the headphones for a few hours now. And right off the bat, I definitely do notice a better sound quality compared to the Arctis Pro Wireless, so the previous model. Not really a major difference there, but a little more emphasis on the mid-range and lower frequency as well. And I just run them in their standard flat profile. 
So I actually hear footsteps a little bit better, a little clearer with these headphones, already just out of the box without tweaking any EQ or audio features in SteelSeries engine software. But as I also stated in the unboxing part of this video, that the fake leather would probably get my ears a little hotter than I would like. And they're not as bad as I would have anticipated or that I actually feared when getting these headphones. But definitely my ears are getting a little hotter. And I went on to Amazon and found one that actually sold fabric type ear cups or cushions for these specific headphones. Kind of looks a little bit like the ones on the original Arctis Pro wireless. So I've ordered those. So it will take a few weeks for them to actually arrive. Once they actually get here, I will probably do a follow-up video and talk a little bit about my experience using these headphones. So my first impressions here is not as bad as I would have uh, anticipating or feared in terms of heat. Very comfortable to wear. I feel like it is a little bit bigger on my head or it doesn't have as tight as a grip on my head as my original wireless pro head for some reason feel like these could slip off a little easier but you can also of course tighten them up a little bit here with the little ski type band so you can put it in lower down here if you want it a little snugger on your head but after a few hours i actually got quite used to it and very comfortable to wear but like i said my ear definitely do get a little hotter faster with these types of ear cups so i look forward to kind of testing those out that i found on amazon and of course i can link those down in the description below if you are interested so this is just a unboxing and first impression of the steel service actis nova pro wireless <laughs> it's quite a mouthful i'll probably do a proper review in the future but there's a lot of other youtubers who have already done that so of course you can go and check their videos out as well so definitely first impressions Feels very nice, good build quality, although there are quite a lot of plastic components to this structure here. I am pretty confident that SteelSeries is knowing what they're doing because they have made headphones for many years now. So I'm excited to go out and game with using these headphones here, see if they will kind of replace my Logitech G Pro wireless, G Pro X wireless, excuse me, and also to kind of put my old series, still series Axis Pro on retirement because I really only want one great headset and these ones seem to really do it all. But that's all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.